So in our last video, we brought components together from different parts studios into an on-shape assembly. Now we're ready to create mates between these components so we can establish dynamic assembly motion, meaning we want the lid to hinge open and closed at 90 degrees. Now, mates work a little differently in Onshape than they did in SolidWorks. In SolidWorks, what we would do is select two faces and mate them together. Well, in Onshape, things work a little bit differently because we utilize what are known as mate connectors. Now, a mate connector is kind of like a coordinate system. It's got a location and it's got an X, Y, and Z axis. And each component that we're mating together will have one of these mate connectors. So when we mate these two components together, we could say we want the X axis and Y axis and Z axis to perfectly align. That would lock those two components together. Or we could say that we want to establish some degrees of freedom while locking down other degrees of freedom. Like in our assembly, we want the pin to be able to rotate 90 degrees so the lid can open and close. Well, in today's video, we're gonna show how to create these mate connectors and how to establish the relationship between mate connectors in our assemblies. So here we can see that we're in our assembly in on shape and our components are free to move around. We'd like to start creating mates between these components, which means that we need to start creating mate connectors because we don't mate between the faces of our components in on shape we mate between mate connectors. Now a mate connector can be created manually, but they're most commonly created on the fly once you enter the mate command. So I'm gonna start out here by going to the revolute mate command in my on shape assembly. And now we see that as we move our cursor over the different faces of this model, these mate connectors show up automatically. In this case, what Onshape is telling me is that if I click on this planar face, a new mate connector will be created at the center of that planar face. In this case, what Onshape is telling me is that if I click on this edge, a new mate connector will be created at the midpoint of that edge or at the end point of that edge. The cool thing about mate connectors is that they will update dynamically. So if the geometry of this edge were to get longer or shorter, the mate connector will relocate so that it is always at the center or the midpoint of that edge. So what I'd like to do is create a new mate connector here at the center of this end face of the pin. Now we see that when we create that mate connector, it does have an X, Y, and Z axis. I'm gonna create another mate connector here by selecting this circular edge and Onshape is going to create that mate connector at the very center of that circular edge or coplanar to this end face of the hinge. Once I select that circular edge and the mate connector is created, we see that Onshape moves those two mate connectors together. And what the revolute mate does is it establishes a coplanar relationship between the X and Y axes the X, Y of each mate connector creates a plane, and now those planes are brought coplanar, and a coaxial or coincident relationship between the Z axis of both of those mate connectors. So once I hit the green check mark, we can see that I can take this green component and move it, and this planar face and this planar face remain coplanar because the mate connectors are hooked together, and we can see that if I were to take this component here, the pin, and rotate it, that the two components remain coaxial or concentric. Again, we're not mating between the faces of the components, we're establishing a relationship between the two different mate connectors. But as we can see, having that Z axis completely free to rotate is a problem, and this component is not properly aligned to the green component. So let's use Control Z to undo that mate. Just Control Z a couple of times here, there we go. Now that mate is no longer here in the tree. And let's once again create this revolute mate. Now some of you may have noticed that once I selected this planar face of the pin, and then selected this circular edge of the hinge, the two components were brought together, but it looks like one of the axes is not aligned properly. And Onshape has a solution for that. We've got this button here, which says reorient secondary axis. So anytime you've got components that are misaligned by 90 degrees, like what we've got here, you can use this button to rotate that component around until it is aligned properly. The other thing that we're gonna do this time is we're gonna choose this button for limits. And we're gonna say that the Z axis rotation starts with a minimum rotation of zero degrees and ends with a minimum rotation of zero degrees. 
Now, I know that for some of you on-shape pros out there, there are different mates that might be a little bit more elegant to establish this relationship, but I wanted to use the Revolute mate twice in this video, and so that's why I'm using it here with a 0, zero for axial rotation. So I set that to be zero degrees of axial rotation. I hit the green check mark. And now we see that once again, when I move the green component, these two faces are remaining coplanar. But we also see that if I were to rotate the pin component, that now both of these components rotate together. And that's exactly what I want. So I think I'm ready to move on now and create a second Revolute Mate. So once again, I choose the Revolute Mate command. This time I'm gonna choose the pin, which we see it's a cylindrical face and Onshape is gonna create a new mate connector at the center of that cylindrical face. And I'm gonna choose the cylindrical face of the hinge, which will also create a mate connector at the center of that cylindrical face. Now here we can see something interesting. Only the component which has the mate connector has been moved into place. And we see that the green component, the lid, remains kind of out here in space. If this ever happens and you want to see how all of the components in the assembly are solving based on the new location of the pin, what you can do is you can click this button which says solve. This will solve the full assembly and move all of the components into place based on this new mate. So that looks pretty good. I think the only thing left for us to do is to establish a limit for the Z axial rotation. And that limit is gonna start at zero degrees and end at 90 degrees. Now, if we want to visualize what that limit is going to look like, we can use this little play button here. And we see that on shape shows us that, that pin is gonna be able to rotate back 90 degrees and then back down to zero degrees. And that looks exactly like what we want. So I'm gonna hit the green check mark and we're gonna test out this assembly. The lid opens to 90 degrees and closes back down to zero degrees. And that is exactly what we were hoping for from this assembly. Now, this is just my very first assembly, and I know that in the future I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about all the different mate types and on shape. But I hope that that helped to clear up some stuff for those of you who are just getting started with on shape assemblies. The biggest thing to wrap your head around is that we do not mate between faces and on shape. We mate between mate connectors. And this is really useful because it means that in an assembly like this, we were able to establish all of the desired assembly motion using just two mates, where in a traditional 3D CAD solver, we would probably need to use six mates or maybe even more. So I really like this concept of working with mate connectors, and I hope that it makes a little bit more sense to you. But let me know down in the comments, did this help to explain things or do you still have questions about these mate connectors? And of course, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next episode.